Am I on now? I'm on now. Hello, good morning. There we go. We're rocking and rolling. It's good to be here. Um, our call to worship this morning comes from Romans chapter 12. I'm very loud in the building. It's unusual. Um, it says this. Never let the fire in your heart go out. Keep it alive. Serve the Lord. When you hope, be joyful. When you suffer, be patient. And when you pray, be faithful. We'll read that verse 11 again. Never let the fire in your heart go out. Hallelujah. Keep it alive. Serve the Lord. And so as we come, let's just open up our hearts and our service to God. God, you are the reason that we are here. You're the reason that we are alive and you're the reason that we have gathered to worship together this morning. Nothing and no one but you is worthy of our praise and our glory. And so today as we come and sit in our buildings, in our homes and in our churches, as we gather as a community, whether physically or virtually, we are here together with one purpose. To say that you are welcome in our prayers. You are welcome in our lives. You are marvelous, you are wonderful and glorious, clothed in righteousness and filled with tenderness. And so this morning we come to worship you. We've come to fire the flame in our hearts once again to keep it burning and to never let it go out. Amen. Let's praise and worship our God together. We're going to sing um, a song that we've not sung for a, a quite a while. I've had to dust off the, uh, the music. Um, Who paints the skies into glorious day? the skies into glorious day only the splendor of jesus who breathes his life into fists of clay only the splendor of jesus who shapes the valleys and brings the rain only the splendor of jesus who makes the desert to live again only the splendor of Jesus. Teach every nation his marvelous ways. Each generation shall sing his praise. He is wonderful. He is glorious.
And so we come before our God in prayer. God, we adore you. We walk outside and we see a new sunrise. We take a walk through the countryside. We see nature at its purest. The birds are singing your praise. We look at the night sky and we see stars with abundance. We take a look at the photographs that telescopes produce of the galaxies, of colours that fail description. Sometimes our words aren't enough to encompass who you are. Because you made it, you made it all and we just cannot describe fully the beauty that we see. We hear laughter and joy and through life we suffer and we have pain and through it all you're there standing beside us, keeping things constant, never letting us go. The maker of all creation looks down and says, I made you and I love you. And so this morning, we come to offer our praise and our worship, our adoration. We don't understand the depths of your love. Our hearts can't fathom the infinity of your grace. That it encompasses everything that we've ever done. And yet we come with hearts full of thankfulness. Because without it, we would be nothing. And so, yes, you are wonderful and you are glorious. God, we know that as people, we do not follow exactly the way that we should. That in our busyness and hecticness of our daily lives, distractions will come in today's society almost constantly and so we don't spend the time with you that we should we miss the opportunities to help people in our society who need it most there are times when we say things or perform an action that hurt those closest to us. And as we reflect on all of that, we know that we've let you down. And then we see the hands of creation stretched on a tree, willing to take all of our sin and shame, all of our guilt, all of our hurt and our pain and our suffering, willing to bundle it up and forget about it and to say, come and stand again, move forward knowing that you are covered through my sacrifice. And so as we begin our worship, as we continue in it, we lay all of those things down. 
and we step closer to you. Knowing that everything is covered through the blood of your precious lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite Barbara, who's going to read to us from um, Leviticus this morning. Bible, and I'm reading Le Leviticus 6, reading verses 9, 12. And 13. Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar hearth throughout the night till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The fire on the altar must be kept burning, it must not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Amen. Don't mind, I've got to take my mask off. Morning. Morning, everyone. Do you know I'm excited and a little bit ooh. It's um it's my first time in a church since lockdown. And um I'm I'm glad to be back in the midst of God's people. And it's been a, a challenging and distressing time this last uh, 18 months or so and uh, for for most of us really for what we've had to go through what were the challenges that we've faced uh, and I don't think it's it's not touched a house at all here in um, in the whole area um, it, everyone's been affected in one way or another aren't we and, and this is the challenge, really, for, for when I was thinking about the sermon. What do we do when we are surrounded with so much, if you like, chaos, difficulty, stress, hurt, pain, and grief and sorrow? I personally lost my father on the January the 1st of this year, and it was a difficult time. Uh, COVID restrictions and we weren't able to see him as a family um, so it becomes challenging to go through these processes how do we go through and still have faith at the other end how do we get through that and the sermon really is keep the fire going the only thing that we have is God that doesn't change is constant and is always the same and but many times people can walk past Anderby Road here look at the church and say is this church on fire are the people that go there on fire am I personally on fire what is the fire why should we be on fire and, and I'm going to get to that in a, in a little while. And we've read out the, the text. It's not usually something that we preach on Leviticus, really. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that we need to 
adhere to. Um, even though we are New Testament believers, the Old Testament is still relevant today as it was back then. So we've read the scriptures out, give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar, hearth and throughout the night till morning and the fire must keep burning on the altar. The fire on the altar must keep burning and must be kept burning. It must not go out every morning. The priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. And lastly, the 13th verse, the fire must be kept burning continuously. It must not go out. This is you and me. It must not go out because we can give in to weakness, we can give in to sin, and the world is watching you and me. Is watching us all. Whatever we do, wherever we go, the world is watching. And the challenge that I find daily is how do I live up to Jesus' expectation of me? How do we? And, you know, it's, it's a challenging concept to get up every morning and think, do you know, I'm going to be on fire for God today. I'm going to be alive today. There's so much life in me and I just want to ooze it out and give it to people. I don't know about you, but that's not me every morning. I'll be lucky if one of my legs can get out of bed and think, oh, do you know, another day. That's the reality of life, isn't it? We, we get up and we think, do you know, I've got some challenges for me today. But one thing we're assured of is that God is with us, regardless of what we're going through. So firstly, through these verses, I'm going to look at what is the fire? Whose responsibility is the fire for not going out? And thirdly, how can we see that the fire in general does not go out? Why should it keep burning? So I'm going to be brief. It's only going to take me 45 minutes. Maybe not. Um, and it, there's only 10 pages to get through. So I have, I have been given, what is it, 10 minutes? 10 minutes more. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if we get through it all, eh? Um, what is the fire? What is the fire? The fire is the presence of God. The good news from what the New Testament tells us is that the Holy Spirit lives in within us, doesn't it? That when we become a believer, he imparts himself into us. So therefore, God's spirit is always with us. That never leaves. It's just whether or not we can fan that flame to be alive today. To be excited today. To be expectant today. That God's going to use you and me to do something miraculous today. And I don't mean baking cookies, as wonderful as cookies are. What are we expecting? I was talking to a, a pastor friend of mine in, in Watford on Thursday. And their church is doing some new things coming up this year. And... And they were saying that, I've got this to do, I've got that to do, I've got this other thing to do. And it's like, whoa, as wonderful as good things are, what is God asking you to do? There's a corporate message 
in Christianity, but there's a personal message as well. What is God asking of you? Uh, Moses saw the burning bush, didn't he? The presence of God, the flames of God, the fire was there. Elijah, same thing. He brought the fire from heaven down and then destroyed the prophets of Baal. Fire represents the presence of our almighty God. And we can experience that daily. But sadly, as I've said, when, when difficulties come, we sort of like just go to an ember. We're not full of flames. You know, again, another thing. We've just got um, a new log stove put in to our front room. We've just moved. So we've only been in the house three weeks. And, and I can say it because she's not here. But she and half a slave driver. And Don't the no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she knows what the internet is. No, she doesn't. And um, it's I'm ripping out the bathroom at the moment, and I'm tiling it and doing all the all the things in there. And uh, anyway, we got this log fire uh, put in, and it's been too warm to put it on. And we praise God because the other day it got a little bit chilly. And we thought, right, this is the day. This is the day the Lord has said, burn that fire. <laughs> so we got some wood on it. And it was lovely. And there's nothing more... I can't even think of the word. It's just peaceful to sit in front of an open fire and see the flames. It's attractive, isn't it? That's the message. It's attractive when we're on fire. And I don't mean literally, you know, burning flames. That's not obviously attractive at all. But it's attractive to have the presence of God oozing out of us, isn't it? For the people that we connect with. Whose responsibility is it? To keep the fire burning. Now it mentions the priests in Leviticus. And um, we can be a little bit blasé in the church. And say well it's not my responsibility. I'm only there to uh, come and worship. It must be the priest's responsibility. It must be the church's staff responsibility. To fan those flames and get the fire burning. Actually... It's not. In 1 Peter 2 9, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood. So that means you. We are all priests. Therefore, it's our responsibility to keep the fire going. It's mine, it's yours. Have your word. Many times, and you probably might have said it yourself. Do you know, I went to church this morning, and a bit dead, a bit cold. Not really happened. I've said it, and I've been preaching. And, but it's our responsibility. We take something into the church. It's all I can feel this morning, and all these burning embers. It's warm in here, isn't it? Is it? We can take our jackets off in here, isn't it? Yes, it's warm in here. Because I'm bringing, you're bringing the heat, the fire of God into our lives. It's all of our responsibility. We know the fire represents God. His presence. We know that it's our responsibility to keep it going. Regardless of circumstances. Regardless of circumstances. We can go through, as I've said, grief and sorrow and hurt and pain. But we need to self-reflect 
every day, what am I doing today? What can God do through me today? We have to spend quality time in the presence of God to fan our flame. How do you think that God feels, that the Lord feels, when we don't spend quality time with him? We need to pray with him. We need to hear God's word. We need to study God's word. We need that in our lives on a daily basis. And again, I can put my hand up and say, you know, I don't always do what is necessary. This particular Bible has started me off on my journey. Um, there's a quarter of it here in my hand because it, it's falling to pieces. Um, but I've got to say that's not because I read it every hour of the day or even every day. But there's no cobwebs on it either. Okay, we need to be reading his word. The word of God will keep you from sin. But also sin will keep you from the word of God. Fan the flames. Keep going. Keep doing. The third way to keep that flame going is Christian service. Ask your stewards, ask the people in your church on the leadership, what can I do for the church? How can I get involved? And it doesn't matter what my experience is, it only takes you to do something is better than nothing. Tesco's have got the right logo. Every little helps. Every little helps. There was this young man who was a bit disillusioned and his flame had gone out. And the local vicar asked him to go to a, a person's house and just sit with him. So the young man said, okay, the vicar asked me, he knocked on the door, and the vicar asked me to come and check on you. Are you all doing okay? The gentleman said, yes, I am. I'm doing okay. He appreciated that the young man had stopped by. The young man asked, is there anything I can do for you? The gentleman said he would like the young man to read the Bible to him. I believe it's sitting over there somewhere. You can... Turn to where the bookmark is. That's where the last person stopped reading. The man opened the Bible and the bookmark was on Romans 8. And he began to read to the gentleman. When the young man had finished reading, tears started to flow down his face. He looked at the gentleman and tears were flowing down his face. The two hugged social distancing and and one another the old one another thanked the man and off he went he returned to the vicar's office and he said sir i'm okay now i've got my fire back an act of service can stoke your fire up prayer study and Christian service. So finally, why do we keep the fire burning? Firstly, because God says so. We're a believer, we're in his service, we need to be doing what God has asked us to do. Second, we need to keep the fire going because there's still people living in darkness 
I couldn't believe my eyes this morning. I was travelling along the A63 to get here and two bikers went past me and, and on the back of their shirts it said Satan's helpers. I could not believe it. And I thought that is why we need our fire burning. Because there's people out there that are disillusioned. People out there are confused. And we shouldn't be. So for that reason, we need to be on fire, don't we? I've got a, a grandchild that I haven't seen for some time. And, and she seems to be a little bit more regular coming round now. And just giving her the Christian message without hitting her with the Bible, showing her love, her ears are starting to open. She's starting to receive the message. That's why we need to be on fire. We need to be faithful and we need to come to God because I don't know about you but it's worth it serving the Lord I'm excited about what the next six months are going to be regardless of COVID not because of what the world is saying is going off but because I know how big my God is you should know how big your God is because he can do the miraculous Stoke up your fire and keep those flames burning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. As we reflect. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Paul. I'm on again. As we reflect on what Paul has said, we're going to um, we're going to sing again. Um, just a quick reminder for those in the building that we're not massively allowed to sing. Um, I'm really sorry. Um, so just a, a sort of quick reminder on that one. Um, we're going to reflect on what Paul said about keeping our fire fire going. Um, you know, the, the Bible talks about God being like a consuming fire. He takes everything and he consumes it within us. And so we're going to sing this chorus a few times before we sing the song. Consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your name. Spirit of God, fall in this place. Lord, have your way with me and with all of us.
God, we offer you our lives and our hearts. We come before you again, laying all that we have on your altar and saying, consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your name. Amen. Sheila is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom, which is so much needed in our world. Give us the courage and the willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful and which comes from the overflow of our love and our delight in you. Fill us with your love so the world may believe. Lord, we pray today for countries where there is war, random violence, terrorism, or only a fragile peace. 
Give to those who are trying to make peace and in the certainty of their calling and constant patience in their negotiations. May hearts which have been darkened by violence discover a different light and a better way and a better fire. May the ways of diplomacy and the ways of forgiveness coincide at the conference tables. Let each of us think of some area of the world that has been in the news this week and pray that you, Lord, are in the midst of that situation. Lord, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our communities. First, for the welfare of this, our church community, that we may be a spiritual family, a household of faith, where people are welcomed and nourished. But we pray also for the social community of which we are all a part, that you may make it a place where all can flourish and the weak can be cared for where there is harmony and celebration and a true civic pride. We pray for all in leadership in our community, that they may be servants and their goal may be those of your kingdom. Lord, we pray for those who are going through times of trouble. Some people, perhaps in our families, some in our church, some in our wider circle of friends. We know you to be the Lord, both of health and healing of our broken world. And we ask you to touch with your generous love all those who are in our hearts today because of their special need. May your love flood their, li your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind and body. Lord, let us remember as we come to God with a profound concern for the well-being of the world that he has made, that he is interested not simply in collecting Christians, but in renewing creation. Help us, Lord, to be good disciples for you. Father, we pray that this week we shall not be ashamed of being a Christian, that we should be glad to know you as Lord, that we shall, we shall relax in the sheer normality of knowing you, that we shall speak of you and act for you with integrity. Give us, Lord, we pray, the dignity that was in Jesus as he spoke of his father's love. These, Lord, are the prayers of your people this morning. We ask you to take each one of these prayers and answer them in your own time and in your own way. And in the meantime, give us expectant and thankful hearts. Accept this bundle of prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation for thine is the power, glory, ever. Amen. final song says let the flame burn brighter
in the heart of darkness, turning night into glorious day. It's a commitment that we will walk the land that we have, that we'll go to the people that we know, and that every step we'll say a prayer and that every step we will shine with the love of God that he's given us, that our flames will be seen for everyone. It will be seen by everyone. That's what I meant. So we're going to walk the land with our hearts on fire. With your flame burning bright, walk with each other, supporting each other, building each other up in the love that Jesus has given. Share his message, not just with your friends in church, but with your friends outside the doors. As we build each other up, our collective flames will gather and will become a fire. A fire that becomes contagious and that cannot be contained. So go and share your fire with the world. Amen.